Welcome to Stratwatch. Here in episode 11, we'll be going back to the series of how to improve individually. In this episode, we'll be focusing on positioning. We'll be specifically covering what is positioning, what is good and bad positioning, and when you have good positioning, what is the benefits of that? We'll be looking at how do you improve positioning, because obviously if we figured out what it is, we want to get better at it. And so we'll look at the different factors on how you can go about improving it, and the different methods you can go about improving it. I want to emphasize throughout this episode that this is a concept, and that concepts are not something that you can automatically get better at or flip a switch on. It is something that requires many hours of playing to adapt situational awareness, as well as studying the game to see what other players are doing in those situations. So to start this episode, we have to cover the question of what is positioning? Now positioning is simply where you are standing on the map. But where you are standing has a lot of other connotations to it that this episode hopes to highlight. Obviously, where you are standing on the map influences who you can shoot, where you can shoot, and where you can be shot at. And these parts of positioning are very important to get down and understand at an intuitive level. But we want to again highlight, if what is positioning, then what is good and bad positioning? Well, positioning is where you are standing on the map. So bad positioning would be putting yourself in a position where you are not able to do what you're supposed to do, or not able to play your character to the maximum potential. Say you're playing soldier and you're standing out in the middle of Hollywood when you're defending. Well, this isn't really going to give you much benefit to your hero. This positioning doesn't give you any good angles to shoot. It doesn't give you a good spot to set up your biotic field. And it really just doesn't offer you anything. Whereas good positioning in the case of soldier on defense in this map would be setting up over here in the cafe. Now, although this is a very pre-scripted setup in the competitive scene and has been around since pretty much closed beta, it is an effective strategy or effective position for soldier nonetheless. And we can understand why and hope to emulate this in other places, and it's simply because of second degree verticality. First of all, you can shoot down at targets that come out at any of the angles that you're dealing with. The other big benefit to this, not only are you above the target, so you can hide behind the cover and use your biotic feeling field to constantly poke and do damage, but also you can do some pretty cool things with these pillars, obviously blocking shots, and dodging sniper shots as well as rockets or any other incoming damage and this works for both sides and there's even a third degree to this map in which you can set up right here on the or you can fall back to these stairs and you can cover platform and this is just one example of good positioning with soldier because again we're using the map to our advantage we have isolated certain angles so that we have control over them Again, if they were pushing down main right now, they'd have to be looking at us while we're shooting at them before they're able to start shooting. If they came out of the corner shooting, it's not necessary that they would be accurate to where we're standing because we have the control of this area and we're able to stand in multiple different spots. So that's just one example of good versus bad positioning. And again, the benefits of having that kind of positioning there as soldier is you're able to shoot far more targets, far more effectively, and you're also able to have an easy escape route. And that's something we'll also cover with good positioning. Another thing to think about positioning is, of course, who you can shoot at, who can shoot at you, and, and where you are overall on the map. But where you, are, where you are overall on the map also influences another critical aspect, which is escape routes. This is something that really isn't covered too much. But when you're dealing with conflict, like let's say you're junk route. And you're spamming into the archway, right? And they come down main, or they come down this door right here, and you're not expecting it. If you're set up over here, then your escape route has to be all the way back here. Whereas, if you set up over here, you can use escape route over this way into this room. And this also, again, something that we can look at that is situational, and that's what I want to emphasize, is that these kinds of concepts require studying and constant playing and adapting to get better at. Junkrat is one of those heroes that you want to retreat into a closed area. Some heroes would refuse to retreat into this kind of enclosure. But Junkrat is uniquely good at it because you can spam your grenades off of walls and use it as a, um, you know, an enclosed area where all your grenades are going to go. And so that's something that Junkrat specifically benefits off of. But again, with what we're ice highlighting here is that you want to dodge your death by having escape routes. And so have them built into your positioning. If you are going to position here, then you should maybe have a concussive mine ready so you can go up here and escape out. But again, that is one thing that you should also be focusing on, is what the conditions of your hero um, present and what those conditions mean towards positioning. Again, Junkrat prefers enclosed areas. If he can spam into enclosed areas, he's going to do much better. 
Another really classic example of positioning is obviously going to come down to Torbjorn. Now, although we don't see him too much in competitive play right now, he is seen occasionally on some maps. But this hero really emphasizes or exudes the, tr the, the, the nature of positioning. As you have to, with Torbjorn, be very for uh, have a lot of forethought with your positioning with not only your hero, but your turret. For instance, re in a previous episode, we went down through a Hollywood game. What we saw from Liquid is that they used two... Or, sorry, uh, Gale Force is they used two uh, specific positions with their turrets. They had this one back here, which was benefiting any pushes around to this corner, right? Because, like, this turret can shoot here if they come down main and is easily shot at. But if they come around here through the dumpster, then they're not going to be able to get at the turret until they're here. This also gives you a lot of cover on this back area, as it makes it really hard to flank it around this stairwell. And this turret placement has its benefits, but it has its downfalls. And that's where understanding the different situations and why they switched it up to over here. If you're constantly switching your turret's place, then the enemy is going to be pushing through here next time, expecting your turret to be right here. But really, your turret's over here, and your hero is in a different position. And again, that's where Torbjorn, I think, exudes this kind of decision-making. Because not only is your turret in a spot, and that has an impact, but you also have to put your hero in a spot. And again, Torbjorn should never strictly be standing completely next to his turret. Sometimes he should be, because it's nice to repair it. But if you put yourself in a position where Torbjorn himself is a threat, and the turret is a threat, you've created two angles of fire, one from the Torbjorn, one from the turret, that when they intersect, they can't be shot at from the same spot to the, uh, to the same end, right? So Farrah can't shoot one rocket and kill both targets. So that's something worth noting, is that when you're playing specifically heroes like Torbjorn, you need to think about that kind of uh, double positioning. You know, how does my turret cover an area, and what can I do to benefit my turret's cover? The last hero I want to specifically go over in this instance before we get on to the ways and how to improve is Symmetra. Now again, all of the heroes have different situational understandings or different ways that you can position and different uh, outcomes in games and that you need to play them and study them uh, of other players to get better at it and that's what we'll be going over in a second. But I really want to focus on these heroes because they exude the, the, the core principles of positioning which is obviously who you can shoot at, what you're getting shot at by, where you can be seen by, and also at the same time your escape routes is what we covered with Junkrat. But now I want to cover something with Symmetra, which is kind of like this idea of unconventional positioning. So obviously with Symmetra, you know, you'll do your turret placement, usually you'll do quite a few here, and you'll usually do one over here at the entrance. But the other thing I want to cover is that Symmetra is one of those heroes that rewards good positioning. Most Symmetras, you'll see, will sit up over here and start spamming out orbs this way. This is another really common spot. Again, you can see that the natural built-in cover of having this escape into a health pack allows you to stay alive longer and get more done. And that's kind of like the core principle of any game like this. But what I've seen also from higher level Symmetras lately is they've been using unconventional positioning. Now, although this, like their team, will be set up all over here on the point, now, this may be a slightly suspect position, but if you only come out to this point, you do have escape routes. You have this into a health pack, and you can fire your orbs down this line. And this was discovered by me watching another player, but at the same time, these kinds of positioning and these kinds of uh, ways to break down the map can be discovered through just simply playing the game, but also simply through studying it. So, again guys, if we want to recap real quick, we just want to go over the fact that positioning is where you're standing on the map. And where you're standing has important connotations that you need to think about when you're deciding what is good and bad positioning. What kind of cover do I have? Who can I see and who can see me? What areas do am I not covering, right? If you're standing here and somehow somebody is off in storage, then this, this positioning is no longer as good. You'll want to be positioning back here because you want to account for the fact that they can come for this door or this door. So that's the idea of, of what can shoot at me or what can see me. And then of course is escape routes, right? You want to be able to always get away alive so that you can continue to fight another day and get more done for your team. That's like the default, sometimes it's better to run in and die when your mercy has resurrection. But in general, staying alive and getting more done is always a good call. So that's basically what positioning is. And if you have good positioning, it gives you benefits to, or access to more plays that you would have had. Again, soldiers sitting up here can do so much damage across security, across the main arch, and across the flank. If Symmetra is set up over here for the first push, you can get good orbs in right here, 
And then of course you can fall back to this stairwell and you have this area back here that you can cover. You can also come back here and fire orbs down this and it gives you better angle and a different angle. But that all just comes from if you position better you can get more out of your hero and get more out of your setup as a team. And when every player is positioning optimally, it can go a lot better in games that it maybe shouldn't have because of that small mechanic that you're paying attention to. So now we need to look at how do you improve your positioning. Well, doing what we just did here is definitely something that can help you along that way. And studying your own play and studying other people's play is a big one. But again, I want to emphasize this idea that it is incredibly situational. Heroes change the way you position. As we discovered today, as walking through, Soldier is a completely different positional hero than Junkrat. And so you do need to specifically emphasize that in your play to get the most out of those heroes. The strategy matters at the end of the day too. If your strategy sits up with a Reinhardt right here and a Roadhog behind that with a Symmetra, then the Symmetra should be here because the Symmetra is going to provide cover when people jump in and back out giving extra damage and killing those targets or maybe your strategy relies on controlling this flank so then it would matter a lot more that your Symmetra is set up over here and providing your team with intel that the team is flanking that way and again as you develop fights and your, the, uh, your fight sense increases as in you do you, you, you do take on more team fights you understand certain situations and positions you will be able to improve what uh, situational understanding you have towards positioning because you'll know well if this Pharah is going to be looking to barrage when she jumps up across this way then I should be positioning myself over here to take it out and then I can quickly do that to take out another hero and that's not exactly what you should do per se but my point is is that the more you play and the more you deal with those situations the better understanding you develop and those are the factors that are incredibly hard to explain but those factors do matter so now we go into how to improve on positioning itself again I'd like to emphasize that the previous section was really just a breakdown of what positioning is and all the things that you can sit down and think about when you when you think about positioning and that is important that you you consider all of those factors when you're not playing when you're in the middle of the game, you never have the time to consider those factors, and that's why out of time research is very, or out of game research is incredibly important to be able to develop that situational understanding. So, when it comes to understanding the map, again, back to the other episode of how to improve individually, running around maps is very important. You'll develop an understanding of certain uh, paths you can take. You know, like not everyone necessarily jumps on this to get on top of that as like a little, you know, path you can take. These little things that if you run around the map and you uh, experience what there is out there. On on the map without having to focus on I need to kill and stop the objective you'll find a lot more of these interesting paths you can take of course this is the green room back here where the the defense spawns but this eventually becomes a place that you can co uh, have conflict in and use as a flanking route for this elevator setup but that is one really big way to help your positioning is just knowing the maps by the back of your hand what how do you get on top of this building as quickly as possible and that building well of course it's mainly the elevators unless you're a verticality hero the second thing is, of course, studying your own VODs, and I think I want to highlight this big time. Studying your own VODs and studying your own gameplay is very important to see how you play. If you're not able to record in HD, don't fret. You should be recording in whatever quality you can if you're very serious about getting better at your positioning, and watch your own play. It helps you understand what you do and you can see what you're doing out of the heat of the moment so that you can understand your own decision making better and you can say well you know when I'm soldier and we're we're having a hard pressed fight I run in too far I get up in the front and I shouldn't be doing that as soldier I should be standing back and the next few games as soldier you focus on standing farther in the back and you get more done and that's just one example of how reviewing your own gameplay can make a massive difference um, another important thing about reviewing your own gameplay is it also allows you to see your uh, your good decisions, right? When you're making uh, playing Farah and you make some really good decisions about going up over here and using this natural cover to get a barrage off that angle down into this area, right? Like from here to here, then that's something that you should think about and, and, and continue to do because it's a good position and it's something worth noting. You took all the time to flank as a hero that normally can't get up to the high verticalities here, and you were able to get a good gank, like, mm, let's say, Tracer. You know, Tracer needs to run all the way around. She can't just teleport like a Reaper could or fly up like a Farrah could, and you get back here and you get a lot of good kills. That's something that you should continue to emulate. That's good positioning, good play, good understanding. And so that's why you should record your own play and watch it if you were very serious about getting better at this. The next part is obviously going over professional play, and that'll bring us into the second portion where we actually try to break down some professional level positioning.
So again, guys, to recap this first point, we really just wanted to emphasize the conceptual understanding of positioning. What is it? What is good and bad positioning? How can we improve our positioning? And what are the benefits of us having good positioning? But now we're going to move into the the studying of professional VODs. I want to again emphasize that this is something that you can't just improve on overnight. And it is something that you will probably have to record your own film, study your own play, and of course spend the extra time running around the maps and understanding all of the little intuitive path uh, taking that you can have to have the best position possible in every fight that you can. Because at the end of the day, if you want to be the top percentile of a player and you want to strive to be the best player possible, we should strive to be as consistent as possible in every situation, not be the best player per se. Because you can never hope to be the number one player at all times. But if you can strive to be a consistent player in every situation, then it will benefit you in the long run. Now we're going to look at professional play and study it in the specific lens of positioning. This is a film I've watched a little bit of, but again guys, I want to emphasize in these How to Improve Individually episodes that the film review is not going to be more around me breaking it down in the sense that I do for other episodes, but looking at the stuff that we want to improve on individually. So for positioning here, if we're going to improve on our Widow's positioning, we definitely want to study somebody like Gods. Gods is a really good player when it comes to understanding where to be and how to get good shots, and obviously skill and having very good aim and getting those kinds of headshots is important, but we can emulate that he is using that trick shot to gain himself an additional look that he didn't have if he continued to push into security like that. You notice that when he pushed into security like that, he ended up taking quite a bit of damage from Debit because he got forced, uh, or he, he got, a, a you know, the, the, I guess, pushed in on. And they, they, they forced heroes into his face, and that makes it very hard for Widow to be able to actually stop, uh, or, or, or stop them and deal with them. So... It is important to note those kind of things, right? Like, you want to be using trick shots as Widow to be able to get those kinds of shots when you don't have good angles, especially on maps like Hollywood. But we'll go ahead and switch gears to who is being focused on in the VODs. Now, unfortunately, until there is a replay client out, this is harder to do, guys, and this is the problem that I've run into making each of these episodes. But the best way I've found to resolve it is that if you feel like you don't understand exactly what happened, rewatch the replay in slow. 0.5 is what I usually do, and watch the fight over a few times and focus on the player one at a time and see what each player is doing. Once you know that, then you can figure out as a whole what the best decisions were. And again, here you can see that the side of Luminosity is kind of getting stalled up at the beginning. They're not able to really get as far in as they want to. But to compensate for that, they're using the Widow in the far, far back to go ahead and pick at with Trick Shots, the other setup. And then they have Seagull off to the right side, using the Pharah's verticality to push people off of the top of that building, and it forced the Winston into, uh, into the fight. So again, it, it, it's important to note here that you can see different heroes again doing per different things. You don't have the entire team of Luminosity sitting on the payload. Whether they have a group of heroes that it's their job to make sure that the payload continues moving, and then you have the Fair and Mercy who are always operating independently, doing what they need to do, and then of course the Widow should always be operating on some independent level. But again, to focus here, it, it's worth noting that you guys should be going back when you're doing your own VOD review. Um, and, and looking at the plays over and over again. I want this to be a, a example of how you can go about studying this stuff. So again, it's hard to really see exactly what Seagull did there, but if we were going to study it, what I would do is go back and look at exactly what happened here. And we'll go back a total of 15 seconds. And it looks like for the most part, Seagull's been sitting on top of that building the entire time, raining down rockets. And the moment that Reaver came out to that flanking side, he jumped down onto the um, building to help deal with him. And then that presented an opportunity for him to ult. That was all just a series of decisions that happens because he sees the map unfolding in front of him and takes advantage of it. As you can see here, they've won the fight, and so the positioning call is to go aggressive and to start zoning them out and to gain more map time for free. If the defense is not able to set up, then the defense is not able to stall up the cart. And that is free push time that Luminosity can use. But it is interesting to note that they all do end up grouping up right there. They all come to a central point as they're pushing in to kind of heal everyone up, top everyone off, and be ready to fight. Another thing that can also influence ultimates, or sorry, uh, positioning is ultimates. And that's something that you should take note when you're doing your reviews, is what ultimates are available and what are they thinking about using. Obviously, Milo currently has a Earth Shatter, so that might influence the decision making of Seagull to where he goes so he can land a better barrage to combo off of that Earth Shatter. And as you can see here, 
that her shatter was very critical. But again, the positioning of Seagull staying in the back up to the side, nobody on Cloud9 is doing anything to stop him, and that is a mistake from Cloud9. But again, that is something that you can continue to do regardless. If you force yourself into a position where you're uh, constantly controlling a flank or controlling high ground, it makes a big difference in your positioning because you have effectively gained something through your positioning. If you win the duels and you get onto the flank or you get onto the high ground like Seagull is right now, then he has gained high ground control for his team and that positioning, that benefit, and that is something that you can emulate. And that's something I want to really emphasize is that you see that these players never give up these positions, right? If you have a high ground position, if you cannot give it up, then you shouldn't. You should really try to fight for it and stabilize it so that you can continue to use it to its maximum effect. But again here, we see Siegel standing on this high ground, constantly poking out. Not once has he really fallen down onto main as a Fera. Now that may seem somewhat obvious sometimes, but at the same time, it can seem less intuitive that maybe you want to just get onto main so you can have better rockets. But he's never giving himself perfect angles, but rather putting himself in a perfect position to have better angles eventually. And this is where that allows this kind of barrage to happen because he was set up above and wasn't over poking. The side of Cloud9 was never able to get on Seagull. When Enigma goes around, it looks like that there was that communication between the two players where Siegel is saying, I have my barrage, I can line it up, and Enigma goes, I got you, and he lines it up for him. And then he drops down into a more suspect position, but he gets bubbled by Enigma. And that's all that comboing of communication with positioning. But that's individual level. You can look at both of the Zarya and you can look at the Farah and come to two different conclusions about what to what to look at. If you're the Zarya there, then obviously you, ca you, you were pushing up into the center of the fight. You were ca causing the team to group up and to take the fight. You then flank around using your Graviton Surge to set up your Farah, and then as soon as your Graviton Surge goes out, you bubble up your Farah. If you're the Farah in that situation, you're constantly poking off of the high ground like you can see here, using your boost to get back up, and then using your Rocket Barrage once the Graviton Surge is available. But you can see Siegel never really touched the ground there. What he did is he fell down from the high ground and he kept fluttering his jets until they were uh, out of fuel. And then he used his Q to bounce up into the air and to get a better position. So again, guys, this is just one example of what studying pro play could help you with. We learned a little bit about positioning on Hollywood with Offensive Widow, with Farah, with um, a little bit with Zarya. And we could go back through this film and study it again. But I want to highlight, guys, that if you're going to improve your positioning, the best ways to go about it are to study the maps, know them in and out, to then study your own play and see what you do wrong, what you don't like about your positioning and what you could improve on. And then the third thing is, of course, study professional or competitive level play and play that is maybe at your level if you're a competitive player. If you're a top 64 team, you should still be studying other top 64 players to see their pitfalls and their good plays and learn from them. And this studying of film and studying of other players will help you gain more knowledge quickly that you can put into your play and then be able to win games because that play and that understanding in combos together eventually makes you a better player. And instead of concepts clicking overnight, the more we study them, the more we practice them, the more we think about them, the better we can become at them. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Stratwatch. This episode, we covered again the second part of how to improve individually, and we looked at positioning. This is a concepts episode, and we'll be going over more concepts in this series of how to improve individually later on down the road. But again, I want to thank you guys so much for watching this video, and if you enjoyed it, th please do like the video down below, subscribe to the channel below, or use clicking Raptors OW to take you to the channel page. If you guys enjoyed this content, you can check out my previous episode of Stratwatch down below, or you can check out my casting as well, clickable down below. Again, thank you so much for your support, guys. I can't say how much I appreciate it enough. This is Stratwatch. This is episode 11. And again, thank you so much for watching. And I hope to see you guys next time for episode 12.